Throughout the course of E3 2018, there were two controversial stories that stood out among everything else. The first was Call of Duty Black Ops 4 making DLCs exclusive to Season Pass, and then making the Season Pass exclusive to the game's numerous special editions, the cheapest of which is $100, which I talked about in my last video. In this video, I'd like to talk about Sony, who truly fucked up royally with their handling of Fortnite. So as you may know, one of the biggest E3 2018 announcements was that Fortnite would be coming to the Nintendo Switch. With Fortnite being the most popular game in the world right now, this was awesome news as players would finally be able to take the game on the go while retaining a proper home console experience with buttons, joysticks, a decent sized screen, and all that good stuff. The numbers speak for themselves. Within the first 24 hours that Fortnite launched on Switch, the game was already downloaded a whopping 2 million times, and I'm sure that number has only grown throughout the past week. However, to the misfortune of some Fortnite players, they found that they couldn't log in for some reason. For some, attempting to do so would yield the following message. The Fortnite account is associated with a platform which does not allow it to operate on Switch. Neither the Fortnite website nor Epic customer service are able to change this. To play Fortnite on Switch, please create a new account. It didn't take long for people to discover that the culprit for this error message was none other than Sony, whose tough stance on crossplay has proven to be problematic. So one convenient feature about Fortnite is that your save file is basically safe to the cloud, tied to your Epic Games account. What this means is that in theory, no matter what platform or device you play Fortnite on, all your progress should carry over as long as your account is still intact. I say in theory because the one wrinkle to all this is that if you have logged your Epic Games account into the PlayStation 4 version of Fortnite, then you can't log into any other platform other than PC and mobile without getting this error message. Once you've logged your Fortnite account into PS4, you're locked to PS4, PC, and mobile. That account can no longer be used on devices like Xbox One and Switch. And the only way to get around this is by creating a new account, losing all progress, and starting over on the latter two consoles. There isn't even a way to unlink your Epic Games account from your PS4 or anything. It's an eternal contract. This isn't some accident, mind you, it is by Sony's design. And this is something that's out of the hands of Epic Games, Microsoft, and Nintendo. You can even see on the error message that, quote, neither the Fortnite website nor Epic customer service are able to change this. It has nothing to do with technical limitations either. It's simply Sony saying no. Making this all the more egregious and frustrating is the fact that nobody was warned about any of this. Had people been told, they might have just stuck with the PC or Xbox version until the Switch version came out, as the prospect of a proper portable Fortnite experience is something that's enticed many. Granted, this controversy is actually nothing new. When Fortnite released on Xbox One earlier this year, we went through a similar situation, except less people cared back then. This time, it's different, however. The Switch is an incredibly popular console right now, and many were looking forward to taking the game on the go with proper controls, so the issue has garnered a significant amount of attention and traction. Now, Sony has actually issued a response when reached out to by news outlet BBC, and here's what they had to say. We are always open to hearing what the PlayStation community is interested in to enhance their gaming experience. With more than 80 million monthly active users on PlayStation Network, we have built a huge community of gamers who can play together on Fortnite and all online titles. We also offer Fortnite cross-play support with PC, Mac, iOS, and Android devices, expanding the opportunity for Fortnite fans on PS4 to play with even more gamers on other platforms. We have nothing further to add beyond this at this point. What we are looking at here is basically the long form for tough shit. Just about the most boilerplate, useless PR statement I've ever seen, the likes of which would make EA's very own Andrew Wilson erect. 
Leveraging the situation, Microsoft and Nintendo also provided their own statements on the matter. Microsoft's Phil Spencer said in an interview with Giant Bomb, quote, If you bought your son, your child, an Xbox, and I bought my child a PlayStation, and I'm just a parent, it's their birthday, whatever, and the kids want to go play Fortnite and they all of a sudden go home and can't play with each other, it doesn't feel like it helps the consumers. If it doesn't help the developers and it doesn't help the consumer, then it doesn't feel like it helps to grow gaming to me. Nintendo's Reggie Filzme said this when speaking to IGN, We embrace working with a developer and enabling them to bring their vision to life. And whether that's Fortnite, whether that's a number of other games that have cross-platform play on our console, from a developer standpoint, that's what we want. And we work hard with them to bring that to life. What competitors do is their decision to make. We believe being both developer-forward and fan-forward is in the best interest of the game. Now, let's not kid ourselves. Here. These statements were on some level made strategically by both companies to put their respective platforms in a better light and downplay the competition. I can't claim that Microsoft or Nintendo wouldn't have employed similar restrictions to crossplay had their consoles been dominating this generation. After all, the roles were reversed in the last generation when Xbox 360 was dominating for a while and Microsoft refused to yield on crossplay. The strategy is simple, if you're the dominating console, then it's likely that most people within a group of friends will own your console, and without crossplay, the few who don't will have no choice but to buy the more popular console to play with the rest of their friends. Look, I get to some extent that it's business and all that, but at a certain point, it just becomes ridiculous. It isn't even exactly cross-play we're talking about here. The current controversy isn't about PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch players not being able to play with each other. It's about Sony not allowing players to carry their progress over to other platforms. They're holding Epic Games accounts hostage and using the threat of having to start over again on competing platforms to deter gamers who play Fortnite on PS4 from switching over to Xbox or Switch. It's just all around scummy, and while I love Sony as a game publisher for a number of reasons, namely their commitment to top-notch, narrative-driven single-player experiences, and to giving developers all the creative freedom they need to realize their vision in the purest form, when it comes to cross-play, they're just being asinine at this point. Yes, Microsoft did it as well years ago, but if we keep playing the they did it too game, then we'll never make any progress. At the end of the day, what matters is this question. Wouldn't wouldn't it be awesome if PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo players could play games together in harmony? No doubt the answer for most of you will be a resounding yes, especially those who might have already experienced cross-play between Xbox One, Switch, and PC. And right now, the ball is in Sony's court. They have the power to shatter the barriers of cross-platform play moving forward, to pave a better future for consumers moving forward, to do the right thing this generation. If Sony decides to yield on this matter, then all three major console makers, having made a commitment, would have no way to backpedal on cross-play down the line, not without significant repercussions at least. But for now, Sony won't yield because they are so keen on maintaining their current dominance, going as far as holding players' accounts for a third-party game hostage. This will all end up backfiring in the long run, if you ask me, as Sony has fucked with the wrong franchise. Keep in mind that Fortnite is currently the most popular game in the world, and controversial news related to that game is bound to make headlines across not just gaming news outlets, but mainstream media as a whole. It's similar to how immense the backlash was when EA messed with the iconic Star Wars franchise by screwing over Battlefront 2 players. Loot boxes have been a thing since way before Battlefront 2, and denial of crossplay has been a thing since way before Fortnite. But when these old issues and controversies are paired with vastly popular IPs like Star Wars or Fortnite, it is a recipe for disaster. So much like Battlefront 2 faced unprecedented ire when EA messed with Star Wars, Sony may very well face unprecedented ire for messing with Fortnite. And much like how EA had no choice but to backpedal, retreat, and yield in light of said backlash, it's entirely possible that Sony will have no choice either. This latest controversy, being as widespread and mainstream as it is, 
might finally force Sony's hand to change their crossplay policies and to play nice with everyone else. It's all up in the air, though. History has proven, after all, that game companies can be stubborn mules. But if us, the gamers, want a better future, it is important to speak out about this stuff, to be unrelenting, to disrupt the landscape until we force change. We did it with loot boxes during the Battlefront 2 controversy, and we could do it again with cross-play as the Fortnite controversy picks up steam. This is just one man's perspective anyway. I'd love to hear what your take is on all of this in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to directly support this channel, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, Stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.